So today I'm going to show you how to do electron configurations using the periodic table. So first we're going to identify the s, p, d, and f orbitals. Then we're going to identify the energy levels. We're also going to identify the number of electrons in each and identify the exception to this periodic table rules. And then using that information, we're going to be able to write the electron configuration. This is one way to do it. Um, I'll show you a quick shortcut for the other way as well. Okay, so for this periodic table method, the first thing we want to do is instead of having helium, oops, that was weird, instead of having helium on this side, x, x, we're going to write it over here because that makes it so much easier. So for electron configurations, we are pretending that helium is over here with group 2. This kind of works because in terms of the noble gases, these have 8 electrons, this only has 2, so we can just temporarily move it over here for group 2. Okay, so first up, let's identify the s, p, d, and f orbitals, and so where those would end up. Purple right here, these elements represent our s orbitals over here. So if we were following this straight across and then straight across again, the next block that we run into would be this block all the way up, not including helium because we moved that helium. This block, this is p orbitals. And then if we keep following, 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 the next block that we'll run into is right here this middle block that has a lot of the transition metals there. These are going to be the d orbitals, and I'm putting a star right here because these are our exceptions to the rule. And then down here, lanthanides and actinides, which are technically right in here. These are our f orbitals. Okay, so now using the periodic table, you can easily see the s P, D, and F, and it goes in this order. So starting at number one, we're gonna, always going to follow this way, and when we reach to the end, we're going to loop back around and start again in the next energy level. Okay, and that's because these periods represent our energy levels. First one with one, second two, third is three, four, five, six, and seven. So in electron configurations, the first thing that you write down is the number that representing the energy level. Then you write down the letter of the, um, the orbital that it's in, S, P, D, or F. And then you write how many electrons are in there as a superscript. That means up and to the right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and practice the skills. We're going to write it uh, a complete electron configuration we're going to do a tough one here so let's try nickel to start with okay so if you're given what's the electron configuration for nickel let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here so we can have some space so i can show you okay so electron configurations it means it has all of the electrons of all of the elements that come before it and then we're going to end right here at nickel. Okay, so that means in the 1s, which is this first group right here, it's going to have one electron from here and one electron from here. So total is two electrons, and that's all we need to fill up an orbital, an s orbital. So 1s2, and that's this entire row. There's nothing else because, remember, we removed that helium. So next we go down to the next one, 2s, and we have both of those as well. So each box represents one electron, so the lithium would be 2s1, beryllium would be 2s2, and then that's the end of the s's for there, so 2s2. We are still in level 2 over here, we're just following this straight across. And we have all of these electrons as well. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So two, P, six. So we can see S's have a maximum of two electrons. P's have a maximum of six electrons. When we get to the end here, we restart on the next level. We just finished two. Now let's do three. So now we have both of these electrons. Two, three 
S because it's in purple. One, two, three, S, two. And following that straight across, this is still three. We haven't done anything with that. We have three, P, and we have absolutely every single one of those because we haven't reached our element yet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Three, P, six. When we're done with this row, we keep going. We just keep following this pattern until we get to the element that we want. So now we're in level four. Now we're in level four. In the S orbitals, we have both of those. Four, S, two. Okay, and now we're in the Ds. And the Ds are the exception to the rule. So instead of being at level four here, these are shifted by one. So this would actually be level three. This one's actually level four. This is actually level five. This is actually level six. So that's why I had this little star here. The Ds are the exception to the rule. So instead of being 4D, we don't start with 4D. After 4S2, it goes down to 3D. Okay, so we've got 3D. And then we know that this is the line where our element is in, so we're just gonna count that many electrons or that many boxes over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is it, that's the electron configuration here. So in summary, S, this block, P, this block, D, transition metals, F, lanthanides, actinides. S can have a maximum of two electrons, because we can count one, two. Each box represents one electron. To get to your element, it has to have all of the electrons in front of it, and then you stop when you are done, even if it's in the middle of the row. If you're not done, then you keep going and you keep following this pattern until you can completely write the entire electron configuration. Now, there is a shortcut for this based on the noble gas of the one in front of it. So the shortcut for this The, no, the closest noble gas that without going over is argon. So you can use a bracket, argon. And then, because we know that argon would have the electron configuration all the way up to 3P6, and then you would just continue after that. So that would be 4S2, and then... Again, 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3D, 8. So this is another shortcut way to do this. Okay, so why is it 3D, why is D the exception to this rule? Great question. To answer that, I'm going to draw you the figure from the book. And more importantly, show you how to draw the figure on the, from the book. Okay, so this figure kind of shows you the order that the energy levels and the orbitals go in, and this has been tested and shown time and time again. So this is called the order of filling chart, which is probably in your chemistry textbook. Goodness gracious. Okay. So 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s. Okay, basically we're making a pyramid and the s's are on the bottom. Next one that we go to is the p's and we always, because we're making a period, we're skipping one, go straight to two. So 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p, 7p. Okay, and then next rule, so, you know, we're going up one more, so we're losing one more number here. 3D, D comes after P. 4D, 5D, 6D, don't go much past 60. And then, of course, 4F and 5F. Okay, and in this order of filling chart, the reason it's called an order of filling chart is it tells you the order in which it starts it. And the, the numbering goes at a diagonal. So the pyramid kind of, you see this nice pyramid shape, and I'm sure you'd be able to draw this on any exam or for any reference. It goes like this, and then we loop back around and go to the next line. Okay, so that's why it's 1s comes first, which we see, 2s comes second, which we also see from the periodic table, 
Looping back around, 2P, then 3S, 2P, then 3S, then 3P and 4S, 3P, 4S, and then it doesn't start at 4D, it starts at 3D, because that's the appropriate number that it should be. And so that's why it starts at 3D and not um, 4D, and then you go to 4P, then 5S, then 4D, 5P, 6S, then 4F, 5F, 6P, 7S, and so on and so forth. And by the time you get to the end, you're definitely done making electron configurations. Okay, that's all I've got for you.